Hey, did you hear about new hiking nets car prices? Well, kind of. New is sneakily raising prices by cutting back on discounts. Starting July 22nd, some new models are seeing reduced discounts. In fact, new society policies are scaling back monthly. Remember those Barry Swan coupons? Yeah, they're dwindling too. And by the end of the next month, the rent binary for four months get one free deal is likely to be scrapped. You might be scratching your hand and thinking, Isn't this fierce price for an EV market? How come Neil is swimming against the tide? Plus, July is surely a slow sales month, as we all know, right? So car prices are typically more wallet friendly. And let me tell you, this year is totally different. After BMW, Mercedes, and Audi decided to bow out of the price war, other big players like Volkswagen, Toyota, Honda, and Volvo follow suit. They all decided to tweak their end policies from July, slashing fewer discounts or halting prices costs altogether. So Neil isn't the only one pumping the brakes on the discounts. The fierce competition from the start of the year is chilling out. Could the auto market be shifting back to rational competition? And what does this mean for EV companies? Will Neil's new pricing strategy boost its profitability and more importantly, its stock price? Well, my friend, I'm Sheila Wong, bringing you the latest and greatest in business and investment news. So don't forget to smash the like button and subscribe my channel. Join the discussion in the comments below, okay? And if you are craving more in-depth analysis, check out my free report link below. Now, let's be diving into today's topic together. Let's we firstly solve this problem. Can the price war really end? In the first half of the 2024, almost every car maker jumped into the price war. From luxury brands to the budget cars, the car market's price war has reached an unprecedented level of intensity. It's all kicked off earlier this year when BYD launched the Qing Plus at just $11,000. Then Tesla followed with the price cards. At the end, Ito, a nice massive delivery, brings the price war to nearly every model under $140,000. Right now, the only new players making a profit are Li Auto and Huawei's Ito. Other new entrants and even many traditional car makers are barely hanging on in this fierce battle in Chinese market, as we all know. In the other words, the car companies currently holding the price power are BYD and Tesla and the ITO from Huawei. If these giants don't make any major moves, the price war is likely to wind down as industry expects. So in my view, whether price war truly ends depends highly on those with the pricing power. Even if Neil raises price or stop cutting them, it won't make a huge impact on its own and will still need to adjust based on the overall market trends. In this sense, Neil is playing a more reactive role. So here comes another problem. If prices are tough to move, why is Neil trying to make some noise out here? I mean, raising this price? From my analysis, it's mainly because Neil's sales have been pretty strong over the past two months. By slightly reducing discounts recently, Neil can test the market reaction and adjust its sales strategy accordingly. In the past few months, with $1,400 trade in the subsidy and $1,100 customization found and several thousand dollars in cash discounts, Neil achieved an impressive delivery number. In May and June this year, deliveries exceeded 20,000 each month. Totally 87,426 vehicles from January to June, up 60.2% year over year. Overall, generous discount policies are great for boosting sales, but it can quickly drain the company's comforts. 
Company's latest financial report shows that news brand has already skewed back discounts starting in June. So from this data, we can guess how the CEO thinking about the problems. Just as the news chairman CEO William Lee said, news brand has already skewed back discounts starting in June. The next crucial task is to increase gross margin while ensuring sales growth. So the company aims to return its vehicle gross margin to double digits and continue improving it in the third quarter or the fourth quarter. Indeed, only when the profitability member looks good can the stock price perform well, as we all know, giving us shareholders and investors a satisfying return. But as of now, these are just the company's rosy projections. We hope it all goes in the right direction. On another level, the price hike reflects a delicate balance between brand strategy and market environment change. News price increase is a deep reinforcement of its brand and market positioning. As a leader in the EV sector, NIO has always been committed to delivering an exceptional driving experience and comprehensive services, which rely on continuous investment in quality and innovation. While a price hike might cause some short-term consumer backlash, from long-term perspective, it's a bold attempt to explore a healthier profit model while maintaining or even enhancing product and service standards. After all, news brand has always been positioned as a high-end EV and high-end means high prices, right? Well, the next issue you're concerned about is maybe stock price expectation for the second half of the year, right? All right, folks, let's talk about news financial performance. Despite a pretty rough last quarter, where the stock slid over 10%, the outlook for third quarter 2024 is looking up. Since the beginning of the year, NIO has lost nearly half its value. So can NIO cloud back at least some of those losses in the second half of the year? How do you think so? Well, you can leave your comments in the section below. I really uh, curious about what your opinion about this. First, let's address a looming concern in the EV world, tariffs. The United States and the European Union has recently jacked up tariffs. The US tariffs have skyrocketed by 100%. But here's the silver lining for NIO. They don't have operations in the US, so no direct hit there. However, NIO does have a presence in uh, European, as we know, where import tariffs have been bumped up to 38% from the previous 10%. This could indeed impact NIO, considering they have six out of their nine models on the market there, along with over 1,000 employees and 43 battery swamp stations. NIO's commitment to customer engagement is also noteworthy with initiatives like Power Journeys designed for road trip, complete with conveniently located swamp stations. Chinese EV companies accounted for just 8.4% of EV sales in Europe, so change in the European market isn't likely to shift news financial significantly. Plus, news European workforce makes up only 3.6% of their total employees. And at Swamp Station, they're less than 2% of their global total. So, the tough impact, while real, isn't a game changer. So don't be bothered by that. So here comes to the last part. What's your investment take? As for the short term, news outlook actually looks pretty solid. Concerns about uh, European terrified seem overblown. Their upcoming earnings report expected to show strong revenue growth. Short-term investors might want to buy now and hope through the earnings release for potential gains. This answers our initial questions. Yes, NIO has reclaimed some of its lost value. As for the medium to long-term investors, my suggestion is that the story is still unfolding. NIO's expansion into Western markets is limited, and resistance EVs face this poses a challenge. However, NIO's battery swamp technology is a wild card. 
showing significant progress by 2024. While it's not yet profitable, it's worth watching. So please give new more time. So that's all for today, my friends. Stay tuned for more updates and happy investing. See you next time.